Well, friends, uh, welcome to our today's session. We'll continue our discussion on the international trade theories. Some of the theories we have already learned. A few more theories we are yet to learn. I'm going to share the screen with you. Hope we are able to see the screen now. Yes, sir. So friends, uh, we know there are various internal theory, international theories, international trade theories are there. Okay, and of which two theories are important for us. One is uh, the theory of comparative cost, and other one is the actor production theory. Comparative cost theory or comparative cost advantage theory we have already covered. Factor production theory, today's class we are planning to learn that. And you know, coming to this theory of comparative cost advantage or comparative cost theory, you know, there are two different theories. One is without money, second is with money. That means one case, money factors are taken into consideration in one theory. In, there is one more theory where money factor is not taken into consideration. So both the theories are relevant for you and you need to remember all these theories. Now let us quickly go up to that part. Yeah, you can see various theories are there. This is the list of theories. Mercantilism we have already covered. Theory of absolute cost advantages we have covered. Comparative cost advantage also we have covered. And the comparative cost advantage with money we have covered. Then relative factor endowment theory. Or Akshar Owen or sometimes it is also called as Oscar Whelan theory. That theory we will be learning. Product life cycle theory. Few other theories we will be learning. Right. And uh, theory of absolute cost advantages. You know, some countries have, uh, some countries are in the absolute cost advantages position. Thus, this theory, Apadavs may suggest that the, those countries should produce those goods and services which are most cost advantages to them. And you know, on the basis of assumptions, certain assumptions, he has tried to prove with the help of some example that if one product or service production of one certain goods and services are cost advantages to one country, you should produce the, those goods and services and export it to the other countries and other countries should import those goods and services. Then we, we came to understand this comparative cost advantages theory. Here, instead of absolute cost, comparative costs are considered. Right. I had given you some example that one country let us say, is good at production of pain, another country is good at production of CDs. So comparatively, we have to see. Suppose these countries are these two countries are compared here. One is Japan, another is India. Okay, in this example, it shows Japan is superior in production of paints as well as production of CDs. But so far as production of pain is concerned. Japan is 1.2 times superior. And so far as production of CDs is concerned, Japan is three times superior. Therefore, in this situation, if you see the comparative advantages, it is advisable that Japan should produce CDs because here it is more superior. And India should produce pins. If that happens, then international trade between these two countries may happen. Okay, so on certain, on certain assumptions, that theory you have already understood. Then we learned this theory, comparative cost advantages theory with money. Here, 
this advantage is converted into monitor with the assumption we have tried to prove let us assume the exchange rate is rupees 1 is equal to 2n so this is our assumption only and daily wage rate in india is rupees 100 and daily wage rate in japan is 360n on that basis we have seen that uh, india made che paints are cheaper in japan and japan made cds are cheaper in india okay so therefore india should produce uh, paints and japan should produce cds okay because india made paint you see cheaper in japan and japan made cds are cheaper in india okay last class we have understood this theory that is called as absolute cost theory with art with money certain criticisms are there that we have already learned now today we are going to learn this um, this theory first of all very simple theory this theory is this is our impact fifth theory product life cycle theory. you know every product has got a life cycle one is when product is let us say first time comes to the market that is called introduction stage then it attains growth stage then it attains maturity stage and finally it goes to a declining stage right introduction growth maturity and decline these are various stages or in the in the in a product's life cycle okay new product comes it grows it matures then it declines it goes out of the market right you might have seen many product coming to in coming into the market and going out of the product out of the market okay and they follow this kind of life cycle right okay have you heard of any product like this have you seen any product like this which comes into the market and goes out of the market also can anyone tell me any product which has come into the market and going out of market So Nokia phones? Uh, maybe some old model phones you can say that was introduced in the market. Then it attended a growth stage, maturity stage, declining stage. Mm -hmm. right? So there are many products like this. Mm -hmm. Take an example. Okay. This thing, what, what is that? Uh, VCRs. Okay. Or you can say our uh, CRT televisions. Or uh, you can say pager many products you can find okay electrical any pair coming even our you see some of our uh, two stroke scooters right bajaj scooter etc so there are many products which come to in the introduction stage then you attend the growth stage then that ends maturity stage then finally it declines right so how international trade is related to these stages we are going to understand that First, let us say if the product is at an introduction stage, at this stage, what happened? A new product is innovated. New product comes into existence. And uh, since it is a new product, mostly the production practice facilities are located in the domestic country itself. The manufacturer gets quick feedback because entire production facility and the market both are located in the domestic country. Right, sale is mostly in domestic country and production process mostly are is labor intensive okay this is the situation so in this situation at the introduction stage the entire marketing and the entire business is you can say within the country there will be hardly any export import or there will be hardly any international trade when the product is at the introduction stage okay now as product uh, gets developed and demand increases then products moves from introduction stage to growth stage okay so sales increases because of increase of sale it attracts competitors competitors also tries to produce similar kind of product awareness of the product increases people become more and more aware things or the production process gets mechanized cost reduction happens like cost get process cost gets in, uh, reduced it influences the innovators or competitors in foreign country so because of this increased awareness people become aware 
and people outside the country also they came to know about this para okay so it attracts or you can say awareness is also created in foreign country sometimes there might be some export import may happen in this stage also but in small scale then product moves from growth stage to maturity stage here what happens production gets standardized cost reduction happens by this time technology also become standardized stage. technology become standard product product attains an improved stage and producer starts locating their plants in developing countries okay in order to take advantage of the lower cost cost of capital is normally less in developed countries okay and the developing countries labor cost is less so the producer tries to take advantage of this situation he may move from to different country so that promotes international trade and business production facilities are located in different countries and because of which export import happens that is about the maturity stage from maturity stage product moves to the last stage which is declining stage here what happens the demand of products gets reduced so normally market shifts to less developed countries so producers also tries to sell their products in less developed countries to take advantage uh, of their market production plants are located in the developing countries even the original country where product was invented or introduced that may become important if at all there is a requirement that original country may import that thing production facility moves to a different country and export import happens this is how international trade is related to different stages of production did you understand this four stages i told you introduction growth maturity and declining stage okay and international trade is related to these stages okay mostly international trade happens in maturity stage and little international trade is also there in growth stage but in new product in introduction stage the product development stage mostly production facilities are located in the domestic country and at the declining stage also export import happens right so here market is mostly located in the less developed countries or under developed countries so therefore if production facilities are located in some other countries those goods and services needs to be exported did you understand this theory product yes, life sir. cycle theory yeah now next theory is yes, one sir. more important theory this theory you see this is one more theory of international trade you, as you can see factor proportion theory oxford oilen theory the same theory has got different names okay this 2 by 2 by 2 model theory and there is one more name that is called as a relative factor endowment theory the same theory has got all these names factor proportion theory oxford oilen theory or oxford oilen theory 2 by 2 by 2 model a relative factor endowment theory okay so as you know uh, this is one of the important theory we have to learn that theory. now let us say part this particular theory suggests this theory which is called as the factor proportion theory that states that a country should specialize in the production and export of those products that make use of its relatively abundant factor you know every country or any product has uh, product, any product deals with certain factors of production right there are many factors which are required to produce a goods or produce a service so if a particular factor is abundantly available in a particular country that will be called as the relatively abundant factor okay so if a particular product is making use of that factor then the country should specialize in the production or export of those products and services right if it is abundantly available okay did you understand 
let us say if, if you say that tea is abundantly available in india then india should produce more and more or, or let us say factors of production let us say more labor is available for production of tea in india then india should focus on production of tea and export okay let us say factor of production is suitable for cotton production in india then india should produce and export cotton products did you understand a country that is relatively lever abundant should specialize in the production of relatively lever intensive goods there are some goods which are lever intensive there are some goods which are capital intensive capital intensive means you need capital you need more money to produce those goods and services and there are some countries who are having abundantly ab this uh, abundant supply of capital and there are some countries who are good at supply of labor so accordingly both the country should focus on different kind of goods and service did you understand this is report to us factor proportion theory did you broadly understand this theory yes sir now friends okay if you <coughs> try to go deep into that theory according to this theory that's why oh, it is a photo 2 by 2 by 2 model it says on uh, this theory assumes two types of products one is labor intensive products one is capital intensive products the theory assumes there are two countries and two factors okay so so export import can happen between two countries therefore the theory is support to us two by two by two model so as i was telling you right now there are some products which are labor intensive and some other products which are capital intensive okay so assuming that these two countries operate at same level of efficiency they can benefit from international trade if labor rich country produces labor intensive goods and capital rich country produces capital intensive goods okay that means what labor rich country will produce labor intensive goods and will import capital intensive goods capital rich country will produce capital intensive goods and will import labor intensive goods so that's why what will happen international trade and commerce will be promoted one country will produce something will export produce something and export and import other things other country is going to produce and export that other thing and import the things which are produced by the original country okay did you understand yes sir this theory factor of production theory okay the theory has got certain assumptions first of all it assumes that labor and capital flow freely between sectors okay from one place to another place labor and capital can flow freely the amount of one place to another place means one sector means let us say from one industry to another industry it can move freely that means uh, let us say if labor is producing one kind of goods the same labor can produce some other goods also the amount of labor and capital in two countries differ okay so different countries have got uh, as regards to availability of capital and labor that quantity or the available quantity is different in different countries on that basis we will classify where labor labor is cheap and where capital is cheap on that basis production facilities may be located and uh, technology is same among this country this is one more assumption that in long run the technology which will be used to produce same goods and goods or services they are same people's tastes are same okay people's choices are same the production output must have constant return to scale that means if the prox if the production doubles uh, that is if the production shall double if both capital and labor inputs are double that means if i am uh, multiplying my inputs the output should also multiply that is the assumption so if i put more labor or more capital my production should also respond to that then 
commodities have same price everywhere. This is one more assumption that the products and services are sold at same price at different price. On this assumption, on the basis of this assumption, this theory suggests if this is so, then labor intensive countries or labor rich countries should produce labor intensive goods and capital rich countries should produce capital intensive goods. Okay. Did you understand? On these assumptions only, this theory is valid. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, one more theory we are going to learn that is referred to as country similarity theory. Okay. So, this theory suggests that most trade in manufactured goods should be between countries with similar per capita income. So, if the per capita income is same between two countries, or not exactly same, is similar, then international trade will happen between these two countries. Okay, that intra industry trade in manufactured goods will be common. That means it will happen. Why it will happen? Because intra country trade may take place due to priority and prestige element. Okay, for example, let us say two people are having same capital, uh, two, two people are in two different countries having same similar per capita income. Right, both the countries are producing some goods and services, but still, because of priority and prestige element. People may prefer to use a foreign goods. Right? Let us say here some watches are produced in India, but another similar country where per capita income is same, that country is also producing watches. So people may prefer the foreign watch. Okay, that will satisfy their vanity and that will that will also have some kind of prestige element in that. So therefore, international trade will happen. Even if the similar things are available in India, but because of this priority and prestige element, people would like to import. So therefore, international trade and business may happen. So this theory is called as the country similarity theory. Because of this similarity element, international trade is happening. Did you understand this theory? Very simple theory. Yes, or no? yes sir. Okay. Now. One more theory we are going to learn. This is global strategic rivalry theory. Here, international trade or business happens as a strategic decision. Okay. Farms should do international business as a strategic decision to acquire and develop competitive advantages in order to compete internationally. If international competition is required, and farms should purposefully venture into international trade okay why they need to venture because if they do international trade they'll be in an advantageous position they'll be in a position to acquire certain advantages for example advantages of owning an internet international property right investing in research and development achieving large-scale economies exploring experience core so these will be the benefits Okay, they may get an intellectual property right. It may be advantages for them. Okay, they may do some R&D activities outside the country. And if they export and import, their volume increases, they will be able to attain large-scale economies. And this will give you an experience that will benefit out of their experience. That is exploring experience, experience core. So these are certain advantages that can be acquired through international trading. Therefore, as a strategic decision, some countries may purposefully venture into international business or do international trade. Okay, this is the theory of global strategic rivalry theory. Okay. Now, next theory is about another theory, national competitive advantages theory. This theory again suggests because of some competitive advantages, so countries specialize on production of certain goods and services and uh, export those goods and services. So here, some of the advantages are identified like factor condition advantages. It includes land. Some countries, there is abundant supply of land. Some countries, there is abundant supply of labor. Some countries, there is abundant supply of capital. Some countries, there is abundant 
supply of organization, organizing skills. So because of availability of these factors, so country may be in an advantageous position. So that is called, that is a national competitive, at national level country is an advantageous position. So country should produce those goods and services which require these factors. Similarly, demand condition is another advantages for many countries. So different countries have different demand of goods and services. So on the basis of that factor, country may, one country may be suitable for production of goods and services, certain goods and services. The related and support, supported industry, there are some countries, uh, there is uh, related and supported service, service industries are there. Okay, if they produce something, supporting industries are there, which will be helping them in their products. Let us say you are producing car, industries are there to produce tire, to produce accessories. So because of this related and supported industry, the country might be in an advantageous position. So these are certain advantages. Farm strategy, structure, rivalry, all these are certain competitive advantages which some countries enjoy. Okay, so those countries produce those goods and services and export to other countries. So because of which international trade happens. Okay, did you understand this one? National competitive advantage theory. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, one more theory we are going to learn. This is about new trade theory. Okay, this theory is that to minimize transportation costs, sometimes farms to want to locate near consumers. Sometimes you have to pay. If you import something, the transportation cost might be less than produce in your own. Then you, let us say, if you're using your domestic product. Some, some countries, size is so big and the people who are staying in the border areas, the industries which are located in the border areas, for them, it might be preferable to import something than to buy it from buy it from domestic market. Okay, high transportation costs are involved. Right, so this also happens. To minimize the transportation cost, people import. Okay, did you understand this theory? Let us say we are in India and uh, there are some states which are close to Bangladesh, very close to China. So for them, if they want to, let us say, buy something from Tamil Nadu, or if they've got a choice to buy something from Tamil Nadu or to buy it from uh, Bangladesh, it might be better for them to buy it from Bangladesh. So they'll be pre preferring to import it because transportation cost will be less, proximity is less. Okay, that is called new trade theory. Then one more theory is that, that is gravity model. This model says that international trade depends on a distance between two countries and interaction of countries' economic size. That means the two things matter, size and distance. Country size, because demand is affected by, uh, demand is closely related uh, with the size of the country and the distance between these countries. Okay, since Newton's law also talks about size and distance, and this international trade theory is talking about size and distance. So this is referred to as a gravity model. Okay, this is one more theory. Okay, so these are some of the theories we have learned. And uh, all, the, the, all these theories uh, talks about why international trade happens, what is the reason and what can be done to improve international trade. International trade is definitely advantages, we already know. There are certain specific advantages of exports like use of excess capacity. If the capacity is there, the surplus capacity is there, that can be used. Cost reduction greater profitability, risk is also shared. When you are doing business only in one country, if something wrong happens in that country, that the country's economy fails, then your business is at a risk. So by doing business with different countries, you are spreading your risk. So risk is diversified and risk is minimized. Okay, so these are some of the theories that we have learned about international trade. Did you understand all these theories? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, with this, we have 
completed this part, that international trade theory part. Okay, so thank you.